Concrete Repair, Restoration, and Bonding. My name is Clinton Atane, Technical Support, Costa Kem, Nigeria. I'm here to present to you a brief on what concrete repair, restoration, and bonding can be as a whole. All right, going straight into the slides, what we have in our content for today is we're going to understand what concrete is, the defects, why they occur. I'm also going to take a look at the topic as a whole, then very importantly, what you must take home today is the practical applications of our products to life case scenarios in order to fix concrete defects. All right. So um, what is concrete? Um, we, we Concrete is not something that is um, alien to anybody. We already know that concrete is a composition of coarse aggregate, aggregates, fine aggregates, binders, and water, and in some cases, admixture. All right, so um, concrete is a composite material composite of fine coarse aggregates. These aggregates have particle sizes and the Variation in mixture is what accounts for the grit and strength of concrete. All right. When um, these aggregates are mixed together, there is usually what we call a proportion, a proportion that determines the grade and strength. Okay. Now, um, what gives concrete its strength also is the cement the hydration rate of the cement, whereby the hydration is fast, um, we, can, we can experience cracks and leading, that can lead to defects, all right? And whereby the hydration is slow, it's also not, it won't produce an excellent concrete strength within the required time frame that we need, okay? So now what are concrete defects? As we know, for, as the name implies, defect repair, refers to um, anything or any um, irregularities that was not initially planned, okay? Now, defects can impact actually the structural integrity of concrete and many other um, um, component, many other um, um, capacity in which we expect concrete to function, okay? Um, there are different types of defects in concrete that can occur for different reasons. Um, one of them is actually cracks, cracking. Now, um, like I said earlier, when a concrete is mixed with cement as it hydrates, if it hydrates too fast, it can lead to cracking of the concrete. Not just that, there's what we call differential settlement, whereby, um, the base on which the concrete is casted on has a lack of compaction at some points or at some areas. There could be what we call differential settlement, which could lead to cracking of concrete blocks set on, on it, on the concrete and even the concrete itself. Um, we also have another um, defect, which we call subsurface void. Now, subsurface void, this occurs when um, when there is lack of vibration of the concrete mix as a whole. In order for a concrete to be homogeneous and um, well, well settled, you have to vibrate adequately, okay? And um, another kind of defect we can see in concrete is honeycombs. This also is caused by hydration and irregularity in um, aggregate particles. For instance, whether you are meant to use a, a, a um, half inch granite for your casting, you, you because of um, you want to save cost, you now include a three quarter down and just mumble everything. This can actually lead to um, honeycombs formation. Also, whereby um, the iron reinforcement sets into the formwork for your casting is too compact and this um, aggregate side aggregates are, are not able to pass through those tiny spaces 
This could also lead to honeycombs formation. And then finally, we can also, there are many defects, but we're we just highlighting a few. And um, corroded, um, corroded um, rebars is also another defect. Corroded rebars, these occur whenever your concrete has contact with moisture and air. Okay. Yes, you can't avoid the concrete for the rebar from getting um, contact with moisture. This is because when the concrete is casted over the um, rebar, it's, it touches the, the concrete touches the iron and the concrete has in it some water. Okay, but once it solidifies, that's the concrete, it ought to be well compacted enough to disallow continuity of water touching it and air as well, because those are the two major components that causes corrosion. So this is another defect that we can see in concrete. All right, now let's analyze further on the types of defects that we have. Honeycomb, um, what I want to just expressly bring out here about honeycombs is that um, is that there are different products that can be used for repairing honeycombs. And one of it is our Costa Repair 10, Costa Repair 20, Costa Repair Motor 20 and Costa Repair Motor 30 as well. These are good fixes for honeycomb. Then cracks on surfaces as well. Um, we can also use our Costa Repair Motor 10, 20 and 30. All right, so um, cracks. I want to explain further on cracks. There are different types and levels of cracks. We have structural cracks. We have um, um, cracks. Um, we have plaster cracks, rather. Plaster cracks, structural cracks, um, temporary um, sanctuary block cracks. Um, OK. The plaster cracks are actually fine hair cracks. And these cracks are somewhere between five to 20 mm in thickness. And these are usually not a serious threat to uh, concrete work. But whereby we have a structural crack from like 80 mm, 100 mm, it's getting wider. This track, these cracks have to be taken seriously. The wider the crack, the um, harder it is to combat. But thanks to Costa Chem, we have um, engineered some, we have engineered a coastal repair motor that can suffice and treat some level of structural cracks, all right, depending on the severity. Okay, um, rough surfaces, this is also a defect. And thanks to Costa Chem, we have actually devised a very good repair motor that has a very fine finish that can help um, restore a rough surface into a very good smooth surface. Okay, now rough surfaces, why do they occur? They occur as a result of abrasion, constant abrasion on, on the surface. They also can occur, this abrasion can have effect when the concrete surface was not properly tampered when it was being casted. When also the binder being used is not sufficient, all this can affect and cause the defect, causing rough surface of the concrete. We also have another defect here, which is flaking of the surface. Okay, this occurs as a result of reacting calcium hydroxide in concrete with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and create calcium carbonate and water leading to lack of bonding between aggregates of concrete mix. Okay. Um, flaking is a, is a concrete defect that requires you to actually remove out all the loose concrete surface, all the loose and flaking surfaces before you prime and apply a repair mortar. Um, now we're about to go into the topic fully. I just have a, a quote here by Mr. Hamid Khan. 
And he said, finding the real cause of a concrete problem rather than merely dealing with its symptoms is the key to success for a durable repair and refurbishment project. Bandage or a sprain quick fix approach in handling concrete defects may only provide a temporary cosmetic solution. All right, if you look at this picture on my screen, you can see that um, there is a, a guy here trying to fix a concrete crack with a bandage. What Mr. Ahmed Khan is actually just saying is, in order to treat concrete defect, we have to find its source, its origin, and try to fix it from there, rather than just doing fire brigade approach and all that. Okay? So with this, I'll crave your, I'll crave your indulgence to pay more attention now, as we're about to go fully into concrete repair. All right, now concrete repair motors. Now, what is a repair motor? A repair motor, uh, repair motors are powdery substances made from a composition of specially designed polymer. Now, um, yes, I know you may want to ask and question yourself, instead of using a repair motor, why don't I just use normal sand and cement aggregate meat to fix my problems? Well, what I can tell you expressly is that repair motors are engineered and has been researched and has been improved upon to give the best solution to defects. These polymers that are being employed in repair motors have very good bindability. So they have a, um, a very good ability to bind to these openings and stay there and fill in those openings. Or like sometimes when you use your cement and sand, you may find out that if the sharp sand you use is too sharp and the aggregates are kind of too big, you will surely see a, um, a line of crack upon the crack you're actually trying to repair. So it's very good to use a repair motor because this um, it's actually finer and the polymers actually bind and and um, bind better to the surface on which they are being applied to, okay? So um, most patching repair motors fall into two categories. The repair motor based on organic binders, that is epoxy resin and polymer, then the inorganic binders like Portland cement, okay? Um, repair motors are, spe are specifically designed for restoring or replacing the original profile and function of damaged concrete. Okay, now repair motors, because of their being engineered, they are more um, deformable, so they can easily take the shape of whatever crack or void they are filling. That's a very, very sound point concerning them. Um, they help to repair concrete defects, improve appearance, restore structural integrity, increase durability, and extend the structure's longevity. Now, repair motors have the ability of um, replacing the chipped out surface of, or, um, from the concrete with the equal strength of that concrete. Now, um, when you mix your normal sand and cement screed, you may find out that when you do a test on it, you won't have the same strength as the original concrete to which you are filling the, um, the sand and cement screed up onto. But repair motors have been engineered to achieve very high um, structural strength, compressive strength, such that you are not um, adding a weak concrete to patch a strong concrete. So you are adding a repair motor of high strength to match the original strength of the concrete, thereby maintaining the structural integrity of that concrete. Okay, now um, coaster series of repair motors are specifically formulated to repair and reprofile concrete, featuring good adhesion to substances, rapid setting, and excellent standard finish. Okay, now we have 
um, a range of products of repair motors. And these repair motors have um, different applications, which you will see on the next slide. Um, we have repair motor 10, repair motor 20, repair motor 20F, which is actually fast setting. Okay, for in case when you have a job, you need to deliver quickly in time. And we have repair motor 30, which gives a very, very fine, smooth finish. And repair motor 20 actually gives a rough finish. Then repair motor 40 and 50 are structural repair motors, okay? And um, they have um, different millimeter of cracks to which they can be applied. We'll see that on the next slide. Now, application areas of uh, repair motors. Kusa repair motor 10 is, can actually be applied to cracks ranging from five to 10, ranging from five to 50 mm. And ranging from five to 50 mm. And they can be used on hairline cracks, margarine block cracks. That's cracks that are not structural. That's what this indicates. Cracks that are not structural. Crack, cracks like um, plaster cracks, fine hairline cracks can be used on it. Um, coastal repair motor 20 can be applied to wall, panel, plastering crack, margarine block. And within a range of 10 to 100 mm, the last for the width of the crack, the crack thickness, same as the coastal repair motor 20F. The difference between the coastal repair motor 20 and 20F is that the 20F is fast setting, okay? And the um, coastal repair motor 30 is applied to even finer hair cracks, okay? There's um, hair cracks that are very, very small, that are very minute from a um, thickness of three to 20 mm. Coastal repair motor 40 and 50 are structural um, fixes or structural defects. And they can be used on staircase, reprofiling highways, both external and internal structures. Okay. Um, now, how do we mix and repair a repair motor? The first thing we want to mix a repair motor is is our surface preparation. When we want to apply our repair motor, we have to first prepare the surface to which we will apply the repair motor. Now, what, is, what do we mean by surface preparation? It means removing all form of debris, loose particles, like for instance, the cracks which you want to repair, they will surely have some fine or coarse loose particles. So you have to clean them off and ensure they are all out because they can affect the binding of the repair motor you are going to apply, okay? Then um, the mixing of our coastal repair motor can easily be done. This is another advantage of the coastal repair motor over a normal Sanskrit, Sanskrit um, um, screening. Now, the repair motor is mixed with 4.4 4 to 4.6 liters of water, okay? And if you want to mix it by mix it by volume, you can mix it with a ratio of three ratio one or four ratio one, where one stands for the volume of water. Okay, the the three ratio one mix uh, volume by volume mix is actually give, going to give you a very a very much um, less less. Um, watery paste, Why the four ratio one volume will give you a more stiffened paste. Why? Because the um, ratio of the repair motor to water is higher. So it's going to give you a more stiff paste for you to work with. Now, application, this can be done by using a trowel to gradually um, fill in the openings after you've um, done your surface preparation and mixed your repair motor. Now you need to ensure that there's least air entrapment when you're filling in these voids in order to um, avoid further defect or um, in order to avoid um, further problems, let me put it like that. 
the patching should be done um, in a progressive manner, not patching um, at the center, you patch up, you patch down. No, you have to take it um, progressively. Like if you are taking the crack from up to down, you follow that line. This helps to reduce the um, occurrence of air entrapment. All right, now we have another product here, hydraulic plugs. This is specially formulated for leakage, water ingress. Now, this is um, this is used where we have active leakage, mild leakage. It's actually um, a cementitious powdery substance made from made from well designed and researched polymers. Okay, the two products on diet are crystal plug and coastal super plug. The crystal plugs is actually formed with nanotechnology forming crystals. It's hydrophilic, water loving, while the um, coastal super plug is um, water, water repelling as hydrophobic. So how do we mix our, our coastal, coastal plug? is actually mixed one part water to four parts of the powder and is mixed while using a hand glove because it's designed to hydrate faster than five to 10 times faster than what the normal cement would hydrate. It's usually very hot. So and the setting time is within two minutes, okay? And um, when you want to install, you just need to mix the paste and fix it, form it into a conical shape that will fit in the hole where the active leakage is coming from. And then you hold it in there, all right? And finally, our bonding agent, coastal bonding agents. Now these are agents that can be used to help improve um, the bindability of concrete. They can be helped to use to improve um, um, concrete binding upon concrete. That's when you want to bind old concrete upon new concrete, you can use a bonding agent. And we have our coastal aqua latex C10, Superbond 10, and Superbond 20. Okay. The aqua latex is a viscous acrylic emulsion bonding agent used for concrete repair, especially in areas that require good adhesion. Now, where do we use our aqua latex? It is suitable for use as a bonding agent for both new and old concrete and the masonry surface. For instance, we want to plaster and is a concrete surface that is fine, well casted with a marine board. We may have difficulty in plastering, so we can actually just clean the surface and apply our aqua latex on it before we let it dry to a tacky few and then apply our plastering, okay? Okay, now how, how do we mix our aqua latex for use? We have different mixes. We can actually mix it to function as a waterproofing agent. We can mix it also to function as a cement modifier. And we can also mix it to function as a bonding, as a bonding agent. Now I want to look at how to practically fix cracks the right way actually. Now, there are different ways of fixing cracks, but there is the right way to do it. And the right way involves the right process. All right, the right process is, is first of all, you have to ascertain what kind of crack it is, if it's structural surface, and know, before you then know what to apply on how to go about it. If it's a surface cracks, crack that is below 50 mm, or within the range of 50 to 100 mm, you can go ahead with these processes which I'm going to highlight. Now, the surface preparation, first thing is to measure the crack, open up the cracks, that's you are removing all loose latents and particles on the crack. Then you wet the crack, all right? Then after that, we're going to do a priming. And what do we use for priming? Aqua Latex C10 is a bonding agent. So you apply, use it um, with a brush to apply to hard to reach tight areas. 
or if it's on a wide um, surface, you can just use a roller brush to apply the Aqualatex C10, okay? Now, so now you are done with surface preparation and priming. The next thing is to mix the quantity you will need to actually fit into the cracks. And um, you mixing your coastal repair mortar, like I said earlier, you either mix it by volume or you mix the whole bag to 4.4 to 4.6 liters of water. Okay, so once it's mixed, the next thing is to fill in the cracks with your homogeneous mix. Please note is for better results and efficiency, it's best you use a hand drill mix to mix your um, coastal repair mortar. Now this is the right process or now to actually treat a surface crack using coastal repair mortar and also um, structural cracks that are not exceeding 100 mm thickness. The next practical um, application I'm going to talk about is how to fix corroded rebars. Now, if you notice in old houses, we have corroded rebars everywhere. There is a right way to fix it so that you can salvage the situation, especially if after performing a non-destructive test on the concrete and the concrete passes, but is facing um, facing um, defects from corrosion of the rebars. So the first thing you need to do is to remove all loose materials using a bristle brush to wash off, to clean off all the corroded ions from the um, rebar. Now, after doing that, the next thing is to clean up the area. You can use water, you can actually use a brush, but you need to clean it effectively enough such that all loose part and particles are removed before damping the um, area in which you are trying to repair. Then the next thing you have to do is to prime. Now, there is a specific product Coastal Chem has, which can be used to treat these um, rebars before covering them up with a repair mortar. And it's called our Coastal Zinc Primer 10 and 20. Okay, so after doing your surface preparation, you can apply the Zinc Primer 10 and 20 before you apply your aqua latex over it once it's cured to help bond the, um, the coastal repair mortar to the um, rebar surface. Now, the next thing you need to do is to mix your coastal repair mortar, then fill in, fill in the openings once mixed. All right, now the next practical um, example I want to give is the process of bonding half-casted concrete. Whenever you find yourself in a situation where you've casted your concrete halfway and you need to wait several hours before you complete the casting, you may need to use, you will actually need to use the bonding agent at the edges before you continue your casting, especially when the previous casting has already set. Okay, you can see in the picture an example. What you need to do is clean up the edges, then you wet it and mix your bonding agents. How do you mix your, your um, bonding agents? That's your aqua latex C10. It's 0.5 part of cement to one part of the aqua latex liquid. You mix it and apply it to the edges of the concrete before you cast, continue your casting. So that's another way to treat um, half casted concrete edges. Okay, now the final life scenario I would like to talk about is the process of bonding new concrete upon old concrete. Now, whereby a concrete surface is already casted and we need to increase its thickness thereabout, we can actually do that by, by means of a bonding agent. Now, we just need to clean the surface, the concrete surface, vacuum it, make sure all debris and loose latents are out. Then we we'll wet the surface and apply out a sufficient amount of um, bonding agents. Okay, that's our aqua latex C10. After which, hello, can you hear me? Okay. When you clean your existing concrete surface, you need to wet it, that's make it 
um, saturated dry, that's you just apply water and let it dry a bit so that when you are applying your bonding agent, the concrete does not just absorb all the moisture from the, um, the um, bonding agent, all right? Once it's done, you mix with half part cement to one part of the aqua latex. Then you apply by a roller if you have a, a wide surface area, or if it's a narrow surface area, you can apply by using a brush, okay? And this is, these are practical ways on how to combat some of these um, concrete defects. Okay, now this is just a quick rundown through the slides. I'm going to pause for any question, comments, which I will now react to.